On June 25th, 2015, YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner uploaded a video titled Sad Satan, Deep Web Horror Game Part 1. The video would get over 850,000 views within just a few weeks, and so the channel owner, known only as Jamie, would agree to an interview with Kotaku, a video game website slash blog. Jamie would claim in the interview that he downloaded this PC game using Tor after an anonymous subscriber tipped him off about it. And with that, one of the most sinister internet legends was born. A real game that contained the most unimaginable and even illegal content. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. And today we're doing another oldie, but a goodie. Let's end the year on an extra creepy note, because today we are talking about the insidious, incredible Sad Satan. I'm going to tell you the whole story of the game, as well as deep dive the game itself. This video does have a sponsor, so we're gonna roll with that, and I will be right back with you. This portion of today's video is sponsored by My Heritage. So I'm 31 years old now, and I am very sad to say that I actually have no grandparents left. I feel like I'm too young to never get to play cards with my grandma ever again and hear her just wonderful Midwestern laugh. So I wanted a chance to feel closer to my family tree. I got the opportunity to do a DNA test with MyHeritage and I am so glad that I did. MyHeritage is the number one family history and DNA service in the world and makes exploring your family history easier than ever. And they cover more regions than any other test out there. The kit was just a quick two minute cheek swab that you send back through the regular mail. MyHeritage promises in their privacy policy to never sell or license your genetic data. You are are the only owner of your DNA data. This was number one priority for me when doing any DNA kits. So a lot of this was, it's actually really cool because a lot of this is actually the rumors that have been going around my family about where we're from were confirmed. Like a lot of it is true. I knew that I was mostly German, some French, 83.3% uh, North and West European. However, what I found out, my favorite part about this though, is that I found out that, I mean, it's not that much, but we're like 11.3% Balkan, which is, has roots in Hungary and Croatia. Very cool. They also have this feature where you can build a family tree, colorize your family's old black and white photos, and even animate them. I'm also really excited that Maya Heritage is partnering with me to do a giveaway for you guys right now. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment on this video, make sure to include your Instagram handle, and write in the comment what you would wanna find out about your family using a DNA kit. My Heritage will reach out to you directly on Instagram two weeks after this video goes live, and the winner will get a free DNA kit. Everyone can also use my link below and use code HANNA for a discount and free shipping. You can also start a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription for family history and research, plus a 50% discount after that. Use my link right below this video to get started today. So as we started this video, we have our main character here, Jamie. Jamie is the owner of Obscure Horror Corner channel. Jamie would post mostly horror video game content and his videos were, you know, doing okay, but he wasn't racking in a ton of views. Until that is on June 25th, 2015, when he uploaded part one of his Sad Satan series. An anonymous subscriber of Jamie had allegedly tipped Jamie off to this game after finding it on the deep web. The subscriber claims that the person who gave it to him on the deep web went by ZK. Now, this was a game that you had to go to Tor to download. Quick reminder for those who don't know what Tor is, I know most of you do, but for those that don't, Tor is short for the onion router, which the original purpose was a way for people to surf the internet privately and without being tracked. However, Tor is now notorious because it is used exclusively almost to access the dark and the deep web. Now, because Tor is often used to access this part of the internet, it's here where people with bad intentions and people that would like to participate in illegal activity typically go because they won't be tracked. Now, because of that, a lot of Jamie's followers, when he showed this game on his channel, kind of speculated and asked if there was some sinister content on the game that he wasn't showing them on YouTube. Primarily, they questioned whether the game included gore or violent images, 
as well as CP. In his original interview with Kotaku, the blog that he did this interview about the game on, he denied it. He said no, no such material exists in the game. However, there was so much interest in this game and the, its mysterious origins that a Reddit subreddit was made, r slash sad Satan. What happened was Jamie had provided a link on his channel to Tor that was supposedly for them to download the game. And his subscribers and Reddit users quickly figured out that this link that he had provided everybody was broken. Three days later, Jamie would talk to Kotaku's, the video game website, yet again. This time, he admitted in the interview that that link that he gave out was intentionally broken. He intentionally gave out a link that wouldn't work. He confirmed then that the speculation everybody had about the game containing real gore photos, as well as CP was in fact true. He gave out the broken link because he did not wanna be responsible for spreading it around the internet. And he didn't want to admit it originally because again, he didn't want to spark a bunch of people interested in going to find it. Fair enough, but it didn't end there. Jamie did go on to post four more parts to Sad Satan on his channel, Obscure Horror Corner. The fifth part has since been deleted for violating terms of service on YouTube. However, you can still find the four parts and the fifth part is posted somewhere else. We will talk about that later. But as this is all going on, another version of the game showed up on 4chan. Someone with the username ZK posted a link on 4chan calling Jamie a fraud and saying that he posted a fake version of the game. If you recall, ZK was the username of the person that Jamie's subscriber claimed was the person that gave him the game to begin with. So then somebody with this same username pops up with a link to a different version of the game. ZK claimed this was the real version. Of course, as the internet does, 4chan users instantly went to this link and downloaded this version of the game to see what was in it. They were curious and of course wanted to uncover if the sinister rumors about the content of the game was true. And they found that it was. However, this link that was provided with this real version was also unfortunately a computer virus. It was malware. A lot of users said that it slowed their computers way down. Others said that it crashed their computers altogether. And this seemed to be a very common theme with this link. But it did, for those that could open it properly, it did allegedly contain real pictures of gore and at least one real picture of CP. This new version of the game, which is supposedly the real version, was dubbed the clone version of the game. So to recap, we have Obscure Horror Corner slash Jamie's version of the game, the original, and this new version of the game, ZK's version, claiming to be the real version is the clone version. And a third version would then be made by Reddit. So the Reddit users, the members of r slash sad Satan, took the link to this clone game with all the really bad stuff on it. They downloaded the game. They were able to take all of the bad stuff out. And this new third version was then dubbed the clean version of the game. And it was redistributed so that people could actually play it because the version that Jamie originally posted, there was no link to it. So there was only a real link to the clean version of ZK's sinister real version. Now, technically the clone version could still be found and downloaded. However, for obvious reasons, it's not recommended because one, it allegedly has some really bad material on it that could get you in trouble with the government. Not sure why you'd want to see it anyway. And second of all, it will likely give you a virus. So there's no reason to go download it. Some masterminds of Reddit, the ones that are really good with computers, were able to download it without getting their computers sick. So we have the original Jamie's version, we have the ZK clone version, and then we have Reddit, the clean version. Original, completely inaccessible. Clone, accessible, but hard to find, and also don't do it, and also will mess up your computer. Clean version, technically, sure you could find it, 
the safe version. So that's the background of the game and all the versions going around. There are other versions that you'll find, other versions that people have made, mind you, but we're not gonna go into those because it's not important to the story. But this story takes the most bizarre turn of all time. If you're like me, you're now thinking, okay, who the heck is ZK? Is this a true story? Is he and Jamie the same person, etc.? We'll get into all those theories at the end of the video. But the primary question right now to focus on is, is ZK an actual ZK? Or is ZK just some guy that inserted himself in this story and made profiles with the username ZK? Was he just taking the opportunity to be part of this viral internet story so he pretended to be ZK? Or was he the real ZK that tipped this subscriber off in the first place? Well, either way, ZK's identity was revealed in 2017, or at least it's most likely his identity. There's quite a bit of evidence to support it. And he is now in jail. So in 2017, a man by the name of Gary Graves was arrested in Lubbock, Texas for possession of, you guessed it, CP. They found out that this Gary Graves that they had arrested had a YouTube channel. No, it was an obscure horror corner, but Gary's YouTube channel was called Scarebear. He had posted a video of his own called Sad Sad Satan. This YouTube channel was also then traced to a Reddit account that was created just days before this clone version of the game was sent out. This Reddit user that was connected to Gary and this YouTube channel was ScareBearZK. Now, just to be sure, another video on ScareBear's channel shows a man who is later credited in that video as Gary Graves. So we are pretty sure that Gary Graves is ScareBearZK. So then someone also found an identical man on the Lubbock, Texas criminal registry from 2017. And with all of that evidence around, it's pretty safe to assume that the ZK who posted this clone virus bad version on 4chan originally was then arrested in real life for actual possession of CP allegedly. It all tracks because then that would make sense of why he had that material to put in this clone game to begin with. And it does make sense then that he probably just made all these accounts to pose as ZK because they were made a few days before the link went up. Are y'all following me? I know it's confusing. So we're gonna get into the theories and what I think about who Jamie and ZK and everybody involved in this really is and what likely happened. However, we are going to deep dive the game first because I'm sure you all, if you're like me, are very curious about what actually goes on in this game that's so scary. So let's go through it. Now, obviously, duh, I'm only going to show footage of the game that is safe for YouTube. We're going to do a deep, deep dive into um, Jamie's version that he posted. And then we are going to talk about what was found in more detail on the sinister version, the clone version. Now, the first thing to know about any version of this game is that a lot of it isn't really a game at all. It's monochromatic corridors that you walk down and open random doors and go in different rooms. It's really not that much of a game. There's no one to fight or things to collect levels to go up to, etc. You just explore the area and find out what terrifying things lie around the corner. So you're walking through these monochromatic corridors and unsettling audio is a big part of the game. Playing the game is purposely set up to feel distressing, irritating, making the player become super annoyed and arguably go a little crazy. It could seriously, like the sounds could make you feel ill. And then randomly, media pops up out of nowhere. Random photos with meaning behind them, songs, stuff like that. So as we deep dive the game, I just want to thank Reddit a ton for their help with this because there was a particular Reddit thread, I will show the username right now, that helped me out with a lot of where all this stuff came from. So a lot of credit goes to them. Okay, so let's start with part one, the original video that was posted on June 25th, 2015. The video is about 11 minutes and 50 seconds and it opens up as all of them do with just footstep sounds and a corridor. Then a distorted and reversed audio of Swedish Rhapsody number stations can be heard, which was this old way of broadcasting numbers to send coded messages to intelligence agencies. This particular Polish station was thought to contain the voice 
voice of a young girl, but was later found that this was not true. This and the footsteps goes on for several minutes. It almost gets frustrating because it's just this annoying stimuli and nothing happening for minutes on end. But like I said, the distorted audio and this like tenseness and like waiting for jump scares, it's all designed to make the player tense and make us feel almost nauseous and it works. So then around the 725 mark, we get a very distinct Distorted, slowed down version of the song Lynch Mob by the band KMFDM. The significance of this song was that the band that plays it was the favorite band, supposedly, of the Columbine shooters. Then we get more number station sound, this time with a Russian man's voice, still distorted and reversed. The last few seconds of this video is a snippet of the Led Zeppelin song, Stairway to Heaven, but it's the same little snippet over and over again, distorted and reversed. So the significance of Stairway to Heaven is big in this game. And there's this internet lore slash rumor that has been denied by the band many times. So I definitely don't believe that they did it on purpose. But the legend has it, if you play Stairway to Heaven backwards, it has satanic lyrics. If you play it backwards, the lyrics allegedly sound like, oh, here's to my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan. He will give those with him 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, sad Satan. And a lot of us believe, and I bet it's true, that this was the inspiration for the title of the game, Sad Satan. Another connection might be that Jimmy Page, a member of Led Zeppelin, started dating a girl in the 70s when she was only 14 years old. The only photo that pops up in this part of the game is this one. It is simply a photograph taken by a German photographer, Walter Sanders. It's a photo of Franz Joseph, the ninth prince of Thurn and Taxis in the Canopista castle in the Czech Republic. So I'm not sure if you're catching on by now. This is going to be the theme throughout all versions of the game. A big theme is child and specifically, I mean, violence in general, but that's going to be a main theme you're going to see. So part two, start off, of course, with more footsteps, more corridors. Around 37 seconds, a flash of a photograph by photographer Roger Ballin is seen. He's just a very bizarre artist, but as far as I know, this photo is simply weird art and nothing sinister is behind it. I'm sure it was chosen just because it has a kid in it and it's very, you know, unsettling to look at. Then we get, again, a distorted, slowed down audio in the background, this time the voice of Hitler in one of his speeches. Around 56 seconds, text appears on the screen that reads, in Nomnia de Satanus Luciferi Excelsi, which is this satanic incantation that translates roughly to, in the name of our God, Satan Lucifer of the Most High. With that, there's another flash of a photograph, this time of JFK, minutes before being assassinated. Around the 320 mark, we enter a room that's actually different than anything we've seen in the game so far. It has circles all over the walls and they look kind of like eyes. It's very unsettling. A photo of Satan is shown at the seven minute mark and a reverse image search would show that this is a artist depiction that's old enough that it's in the public domain. So it's kind of just like a stock photo of something to represent Satan. At 723, there's our first super creepy kid. We get our first major jump scare. We're like zooming in on this kid and we can see that she's breathing heavily. She looks sad. AF and then suddenly we're like zoomed in on her distorted face and then it just cuts to this absolutely blood curdling screaming. I'm going to play that clip for you now. Just be warned you might want to skip forward a little bit if you don't want to hear it because it is kind of a jump scare because the screaming comes out of nowhere. I'm sure I'll turn it down a little bit though.
So a lot of people were worried that this was, you know, screaming of somebody really taken from somewhere bad, but it has since been confirmed and found where it came from. And it is stock audio of somebody screaming. So it was available for anybody to use. It wasn't actual audio of something bad happening to somebody. Okay, so the player seems to be running now. And at nine minutes, there's a picture of Margaret Thatcher and Jimmy Seville at an event for the NSPCC, which is the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Very ironic photo as Jimmy Seville, an English DJ and TV personality, is known now only for the many, many children he is a Margaret Thatcher, the former prime minister, vouched for Jimmy to be given knighthood in spite of the many rumors going around about him at the time. We'll talk more about Jimmy later. A few seconds later, we run back to this room full of circles slash eyes. And now we are completely surrounded by these very depressed looking children. That doesn't unsettle you, I don't know what will. Part three of Obscure Horror Corners series starts off almost immediately with the quote, if I start murdering people, there'd be none of you left. This is Charles Manson, part of his rants. After a short time, more of this interview with Charles Manson continues, but this time you actually understand it. I'll play some of it here, but it goes on for quite a while, so I won't torture you with a ton of it. I live where there's no TV. There's no radio, there's no clocks, there's no electric lights. The girls carry water, they don't wear makeup, they have their babies by themselves. The visuals for the majority of this video are not very interesting, mostly just various angles of the same quarter. Around nine minutes, the unedited audio of Charles Manson saying, quote, if I start murdering people, there'd be none of you left, except now it's over and over again, which again, of course, is just like naturally irritating to most people. Around the 11, 13 mark, we get the weird circle slash eye room yet again, but now it's just a still shot of it from the POV of the entrance. A reverse audio of the song, I Love Tainam, a Chinese children's song sang by a 12-year-old girl starts to play. And that goes on for like a minute until the end of the video. Periodically in this video, we get white screens with these strange codes written on them. Someone on Reddit was, of course, able to decipher these as they always are. And I'll put what they found on the screen right now. Notably, the part where it says, I can track you. Does that refer to the viruses that the game may give you on your computer? Or is it just another way to scare the player? Reddit speculated that perhaps the five victim part is a reference to the Satanists of Ash Tree Close, which was a real child ring slash cult that was actually operating in the UK and there were five known victims. Part four. Again, we start with the footsteps and no audio this time. Not until 54 seconds do we see a statue of Lady Justice. Lady Justice represents the importance of the law and therefore justice. At one minute, 55 seconds, we hear another reversed audio. This time it's an interview with Johnny Rotten from 1978. Johnny Rotten, the lead singer of the Sex Pistols, implied that he had suspected all the nefarious things about Jimmy Savile back in his interview. I don't know. I just want to make a film of it. On film, I'd like to call Jimmy Savile. I think he's a hypocrite. I bet he's into all kinds of seediness that we all know about but are not allowed to talk about. I know some rumors. <laughs> At around three minutes, 15 seconds, we go into this dead end and the game gets, the characters anyway, get way creepier. There's this creepy figure facing the wall, like all Blair Witch Project style. However, nothing happens. At four minutes, 36 seconds, we get another very quick glimpse of Jimmy Savile and Margaret Thatcher. And then at around seven minutes, 13 seconds, another photo fills the screen, that of Tamu Mikazaki, a Japanese child and 
At 8 minutes 3 seconds, we see Rolf Harris dressed up as Santa and surrounded by children. Rolf Harris was an Australian musician, comedian, and actor who was also found out to be a then we get to this new room with giant circles on the walls now and this creepy child slash girl, this time facing each corner of the room in true Blair Witch Project style. We then hear a very disturbing audio of what sounds like someone gasping and choking. I'll play it for you now, just a warning. It's really, really distressing. So in actuality, this is actually just audio of someone crying, but again, it is reversed and very distorted to sound like this gasping, choking sound. Ralph Harris is then soon shown yet again. The video closes out with yet another clip of Stairway to Heaven and Sutamu Mikazaki's face with his eyes blacked out. So now we get to part five. Like I touched on earlier, this part no longer exists on Obscure Horror Corners channel. When you go to the link that was provided on Reddit by somebody, it says that the video was deleted for violating YouTube's terms of service. And I'm not sure why, because it's not worse than any of the other ones. However, if you just look up the video in the search bar on YouTube, it does come up. It does come up on somebody named Obscure Horror Corners channel with the same profile picture, but it's a different channel. There's only like 48 subscribers or something like that. And they uploaded the video. I have no idea if this is actually Jamie or just somebody who who copied his profile for the reason of re-uploading the video. Anyway, the last video opens with the footsteps as usual, but they soon turn into running again. At 1 minute 22 seconds, we get another photo, this time of Andreas Escobar. He was a Colombian football player who was murdered in 1994 after causing Colombia to get kicked out of the World Cup. At 3.29, we get a picture of Roman Polanski, most known as a film director. He was arrested in 1977 for the essay of a 13-year-old girl. His wife was also Sharon Tate. Yes, that Sharon Tate, the one who was eight and a half months pregnant and then unalived by the Manson family in 1969, along with four other victims. At around the four minute, five second mark, a song starts up again. It's again very slowed down and reversed, distorted. This time it's the Alabama song by The Doors. The lyrics from this song says, show me the way to the next little girl. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. At 5 minutes and 20 seconds, we hear part of a Jimmy Savile interview. This clip is played over and over. The interviewer is Alex Belfield. This was Jimmy's last interview before his death. It wasn't until after his death that Jimmy Savile's crimes really came out. Hundreds and hundreds of allegations and decades of alleged towards both children and adults. There's nothing wrong with it. You haven't broken any laws, have you? None whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with it. You haven't broken any laws, have you? None whatsoever. At 5 minutes and 45 seconds, we see this image. It's a photo from 1970s of Druids gathering for the summer solstice at Stonehenge. Then at 6.11, we see this image and a strange crying sound. Reddit deciphers all of these codes and claims that it says something like expose everything, I know you, BBC failed, all hidden. I don't know what it means. At 6.38, we then run into an NPC. The player like tries to run away, but they look back and they see that this NPC is running after them. We hear this grunting, implying that the NPC runs into us. This is known as contact damage, which if you're not a gamer like me, contact damage is when you're wounded by something in the game, either an enemy or an obstacle, just by simply bumping into it. But 
in Sad Satan, there's no way to heal yourself because you're player doesn't do anything. At 7-Eleven, the stock screaming sound starts yet again. The same one from part two. Again, just a reminder, it's alarming, it's creepy, but it's confirmed to be a stock sound of screaming that came with the software Terror Engine, the one used to create Sad Satan. A few seconds later, a slowed down version of Scarsboro Fair by Simon and Garfunkel starts to play. <laughs> And that's it. That's the end of Obscure Horror Corner's version of the game. And it's implied that the player's character dies. Like I said, one of the creepy child NPCs in the game starts to chase after us and you continue to get contact damage. And because there's no way to heal yourself, it's implied that that's how the game ends is from the contact damage. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is the original version. So we're gonna talk about the clone not safe for life version of the game that was posted by ZK and the other not safe for life alleged subsequent versions. So while I'm describing this one, I will show you the versions that other people on YouTube have played, such as PewDiePie. So you can see that this version of the game that you're seeing on the screen is supposedly this bad version of the game without the bad stuff in it. So while I'm describing what's in it, you can see what you're supposedly playing when this bad stuff pops up give you the most immersive experience. So as we kind of touched on, way more bad images are shown in this version of the game, which is very different from the original version. So there's accident victims and unalived victims are shown very graphic photos of them. One photo is a person after they have been unalived by a truck and another of a so this bad clone version of the game had a screenshot from a CP video and the screenshot is allegedly from a video that led to the arrest of a woman named Corrine Danielle Motley. This was a woman in Florida who was producing the material and whoever made this version had a screenshot from this material and added it into the game. As far as I know, that's the only one photo in that game. I've seen all the photos that are included in this version, except thankfully the, um, the illegal one was completely censored out. So I can confirm the rumors of the unalived photos, at least if this screenshot I got through Reddit was true, I can confirm that those are all true to the rumors. So that's about it for the bad clone version. I mean, if you're really used to that kind of stuff, it's actually not much worse than playing Reddit 50-50. In my opinion, other than the fact that that one illegal photo, which again is not really around, people censor that one out, thankfully, so you don't have to see it. And for the most part, that's the only one on that game, as far as I know. All the others are just like, again, gore photos that nothing worse than you'd see on Reddit 5050 or other gore sites. Not that I'm recommending that you go look at it because I'm definitely not. All right, let's talk theories. There are three basic theories to cover pretty much all of the rumors. The first theory is that everything that Obscure Horror Corner said is true. He really just did stumble onto the game one day from a subscriber and he posted it on his channel because it was interesting and it matched what his channel was about. Now, if you notice, Obscure Horror Corner stopped posting after this. They haven't posted on their channel in seven years. And if this first theory is the case, that's most likely the reason that he stopped posting was because this clone version that came out as a result of him posting it caused all this controversy because not only the material, but the fact that it gave a bunch of people malware. Perhaps he felt really guilty for bringing it to the internet in the first place, so he kind of just wanted to keep a low profile and disappear. The second theory is that ZK and Obscure Horror Corner are the same person. Obscure Horror Corner slash Jamie posted the cleaner version of the game to spread it around and hope that he would go viral. And after it worked, Obscure Horror Corner slash Jamie then made a new 
bad version of the game that matched the rumors about the game and then posted it posing as someone else named ZK. If he is in fact ZK, then he wouldn't have posted since 2015 since he shortly after that got busted for having the bad material in his possession. This would mean Jamie slash Obscure Horror Corner slash Gary Graves slash ZK made all the versions of the game because they're all the same person. The third theory is that Obscure Horror Corner and ZK are not the same people, but that Obscure Horror Corner did in fact make the original version of the game and make up the lore around it to make it more enticing, but the story itself is not completely true. He made up the whole backstory about ZK and the random subscriber and the deep web and tour to make it creepier to gain notoriety and hopefully to make it go viral, which it did. However, then some other guy with a criminal past, likely Gary Graves slash ZK, made his own sinister version of the game with the bad, horrible elements that were rumored to be in it, and he made that version of the game himself. Separate from Obscure Horror Corner, he created accounts going by ZK in order to pose as someone in the original story from Jamie in order to capitalize off the viral story going around, and this in turn messed up Obscure Horror Corner's original plan of just having it go viral and the rest of it just being an urban legend. Again, because of this, Obscure Horror Corner stopped posting because ZK slash Gary Graves like just messed up his plan. Here's my conclusions. So what I find so strange about this game is that it is very obviously commenting on child abuse but we can't really tell if it's promoting it or condemning it. To me and many others, it's really not that much of a game at all, and it has so many cliche ARG elements. I have a very hard time believing that it was actually genuinely a video game that somebody didn't create for the purpose of this story because so many ARG and just storytelling elements go into it. It's just, it's not a game. So my personal theory, and this is of course speculation, is closest to the third theory. I don't think it was ever a real game that was randomly discovered by Jamie slash Obscure Horror Corner. I think Jamie slash Obscure Horror Corner created the game himself. It's just too ARG-like and not game-like enough. I think he created the game, told everybody about the backstory, about the subscriber giving it to him, and I think at that point ZK was also made up. He did this to gain notoriety for his channel, to get more views, or you know, just for fun. Why does anybody post this kind of stuff on the internet? Why do we write creepypastas, right? I think the intentions were probably pretty genuine at this point. So I think it took off, but then Gary Graves saw the video and then saw the rumors about the bad material on the real version. So being an alleged predator himself, he made the version of the game that people were talking about with the CP that he already possessed because he would be arrested for it later, and then inserted himself into the whole thing by creating accounts that included ZK in it to make it seem like he really was ZK. Basically, I think that Jamie thought up the whole thing, thought up the lore and created it, but then some other creep criminal wanted credit for it too. He wanted some excuse to spread the awful content that he already had on his computer. All speculation, however, that's what I think happens. Regardless of what the truth is, you have to admit that this is one of the better internet mysteries. I absolutely love stuff like this because there are real elements to it. Whether you believe the whole thing or not, the game is actually real and playable, which I just think for internet lore, you can't beat. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. Don't forget the My Heritage uh, giveaway, so please leave your comments down below. Please like the video just to help the channel out. Super easy to do, and I will see you all in the next one. Happy New Year. Thank you so much to all my patrons. Special shout out to top tiers, Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Dark Sided Otter, Brittany Phillips, Willow Winchester, 
Bambi, Momo Neon, Philip J, Marita144, Sage K, Literally Lacey, Elderly Hipster, Veronica C, Reese Rolls, Leon James, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Headless Fancy, Toby, Carter, Kawakan Anime and Gaining Convention, Sonder, and my newest top tier, thank you so much, to Sarah, the Crazy Fish Lady.